mowing the lawn and the spirit of God sends down the rain like a torrent comes upon that rain just like Joseph was doing he was tidy his spiritual life he made sure his things were in place and so God was always with him says here Simon Simon behold behold look up Simon Simon we wrestle not against flesh and blood you're looking at the wrong people you're looking at your husband you're looking at your wife and looking at your children Simon 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 behold Simon behold you're looking at your employer you're looking at your colleague at work Simon Simon behold you have gotten distracted you're now fighting you're not retaliating you're going back and forth you are now argumentative you're now fighting with the weapons of the flesh Simon Simon behold Satan has desired to have you that he may sift you as a wheat as wheat Verse 32, read with me, what did the Lord Jesus say? But I have, what? I have, I can't hear you very well this morning, but I have, can I hear everybody say that clearly this morning? Can I hear everybody hear, say that word? I have prayed for thee, that thy faith fail not. If you take away the faith of a believer, you got him. If a believer becomes faithless and becomes a doubter of God's word and promises and doesn't believe in the scriptures again or just a portion of the scriptures, he's lost it. I've had an encounter, a conversation with someone who was very close to me and dead to me and he was at the point of death. And he shared with me his travails. He said, the devil is attacking my faith. Pray for me. The devil is attacking my faith. Pray for me. And this individual, things will happen and then suddenly he starts seeing some fire burning. So see what I'm seeing. I'm seeing some fire burning. And I said, are there things in your life that are still at stake? Do you need, to, is there any restitution you need to do? Are there people you've offended you need to mend main fences with? And the person begins to look, examine people he couldn't get to. He writes through letters. He began to reach out to everyone. People he's actually, some money he had taken from some people. But this time he was on a sick bed. I wouldn't even be able to go return. And he says, take the money. Go. Give it back to that person. Go. Take care of that person. I can't reach him because I'm bedridden. And he says, I, I'm just going to say what I want to say. Please scribble it down. And everything was being scribbled. And I was sharing with this person. So I could see the burning flames. When I close my eyes, I see flames. And when this individual took care of all the encumbrances, oh, the flame vanished. And he began to, it was more of glory. Blessed assurance. And eventually he transitioned to glory. <laughs> the devil will fight even to the dying bed. I remember an instance. There was uh, one of our relatives, a mother, uh, like a great a grandmother who passed away. But before that, my mom had actually gone to preach the gospel with her to her. I mean to say, this is an idolatrous community the gospel to her she gave her life to Christ but we're told you know when death came she closed her eyes and the villagers began to cry and weep for a some time after a while she opens her eyes I said why are you all crying don't you know I've crossed Jordan above and she went back to sleep and, <laughs> and departed these are words from people, testimonies. And the devil would try to attack the faith of a believer. He would trail the believer even to the finish line. And that's why people like Paul said, lest after I preach the gospel, I myself become a castaway. What is it that you have today? Title, position, degrees. He says, because of this one, the blessings God gave you, you're blaming God again. It's because of my children. It's because of my husband. It's because of my wife. That's why I'm not even fervent. That's why I'm not even devoted to God. You give a whole lot. And the devil will say, come on, keep listing them. 
keep going, and he keeps fanning you, keep going. Excuse giver, keep going. Is a wife, is Eve. Keep going. And God is driving Adam away from the garden. If Adam had said, going backward, learning from this, if Adam had said, Lord, we're sorry. You give me this woman, thank you. I take responsibility for what she did. Please forgive us. Maybe the story would have been different, but we're learning from what happened. They were waiting for our learning, right? <laughs> Who did it? She says the wife. The wife says the husband. Everybody's blaming themselves. And the blame game and Satan is, <laughs> oh, if they know how I got a host of angels in rebellion to rebel against God, if they know what happened, they will not be repeating this mistake they're making here. Keep going on, keep riding on. And that's how Satan, behind the scene, and Jesus saw Peter and said, the devil desires to sift you as wheat. And Peter didn't understand that eventually, when he began to compromise, he came to his senses. He came to his senses. Somebody here is going to come to their sense in Jesus' name. I said, you're going to come to your senses in Jesus' name. Romans 8 verse 6 says, for to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. And so that mind becomes a ready tool in the hand of Satan. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God, but ye are not in the flesh, but ye are in the spirit, if so be that the spirit of God dwells in you. Now, the Bible says, if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. And if Christ be in you, be in me, the Bible is saying, the body is dead because of sin, but the spirit is life because of righteousness. Joseph's brethren were carnal. And so they became ready to, for Satan to use. They became vessels Instruments of unrighteousness. You know, anyone who is not possessed by God can serve as a tool in Satan's hand. Who are those not possessed by God? It could be a sinner. A sinner is not possessed by God. Sinners are ready tools in the hands of Satan. But you know, sensual churchgoers, if I use sensual believers, then it really negates. Because a believer is not expected to be sensual. But sensual churchgoers are ready tools in the hand of Satan. Because they're carnally minded. Spiritless believers. You know, people who are just content with salvation experience, they're not ready to go to the next level. They say, I'm satisfied with this level. And God is saying, you need to move on. Everything about God is progressive, dynamic. You need to move on. You need to move on. He said, mm -mm. And the reason why they're not trying to press on, the reason why they can't make sacrifice to pray and tarry is because they want to make more money. More, 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 more money. And the Bible makes us to understand that, you know, what will profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his soul? You don't know you're on, on earth for a purpose. You forgot the fact you're a spirit, soul, and body. You're only here transiently. You will not continue here forever. God sent you to earth for a mission. That mission is being revealed through his word. And you must play into that mission. You must advance his kingdom on earth. We are spirits. We have souls, not just body. I pray the Lord will help you and I, in Jesus' name. Now I want you to raise your right hand with me and say, I declare today, I will not work for Satan. Even if he offers me a million dollars, I will not accept. Did I hear you very well? I said, even if he offers you a million dollars, you, you mean you will not accept? Sister? Eh? Bro? Eh? You mean it? You mean it? Don't you ever say, you mean it? Do you mean I say, just uh, cross this T and dot this I and cross the T. It will still look like a T. Dot, put the dot on the eye. It's still I. It was I before you put the dot. And after you put the dot, it's still an I. You mean you will not accept? Ask your neighbor. You mean you will not accept? Praise God. We will not accept in Jesus' name. Not by power, not by mind, 
but by the Spirit of a living God. Matthew chapter 4, verse 1. Then was Jesus led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he was afterward hungry. And when the tempter came to him, he said, If thou be the Son of God, command these stones be made bread. Jesus was very hungry at this time. Command the stones to be made bread. You mean, if so much power was given to you, you had so much power to make anything happen, and you're hungry? After, I mean, there's nothing wrong in commanding a stone to become bread. Jesus fed the multitude with few fishes. But moving at the dictates of Satan is really what the issue is. Moving at the impulse of Satan. And you have to be able to discern when it is not God. You have to be capable of discerning when it is the devil. It was the devil speaking to Jesus at this time. And unfortunately today, many believers are unable to discern the moves of Satan. They would have finished fighting before this. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, oh. I didn't know this Christian was this difficult. Ah, have mercy. Take my life, oh God. If you were a man of a spirit, a man of the world, a man that's discretionary, a man that's thoughtful, a man that listens before even talking, you are slow to speak, quick to hear. You will not be torpedoed or tumbled or sunk by the devil. You will not be sunk by the devil in Jesus' name. And when the tempter came to him, he said, If thou be the Son of God, command that these stones be made bread. He said, I answered and said, It is written. Jesus said it is written. Why is he saying it's written? Because of the power that is in the world. Because of the power. Can anybody say power? That is in the world. And when the Spirit of God is in you, because anybody can quote the word, but it's the Spirit of God in you with the word, Satan cannot stand. But look at the persistence of Satan. He staggers and says like, he gave me one punch. He says, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. Then the devil turns around with his wiles again. So he's still there. He's still waiting there. Well, I hope you're waiting in the place of prayer. Not that you're waiting by the doorpost of a motel where there are prostitutes. Not that you're waiting by a place that endangers your life. And you're saying that it is written. Joseph didn't do that in Potiphar's house. Joseph so this woman is too tough. The devil behind you, well, I finished binding that devil. Now it's time for the human being to run. You want, the woman grabbed, he took, just released the thing and, and, and jumped out of the house and ran away. Some new age believers will still be speaking in tongues. Speaking in tongues. And they don't understand that Jesus said the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. And Jesus was crying in the wilderness, speaking in tongues, and the devil is tapping them, speaking in tongues. And before they know it, they are crying. That will not befall somebody here in Jesus' name. Say, so that will not befall me in Jesus' name. We see verse 5. Then the devil takes him up into the holy city and set him on the pinnacle of the temple. And said to him, if thou be the son of God, cast thyself down, for it is written, he will give his angels charge concerning thee. And in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest at any time they dash, die, dash thy foot against the stone. Literally tell him, commit suicide. Just kill yourself. Kill yourself. I've been fortunately in a situation where somebody jumps down from a nine-story building all because of some just little disagreement and tumbles with the whole head and the head explodes like a bomb. Shatters everywhere. There. Campus. From 
Same floor. We were there. Because I was a dumb walker. We we're pleading, don't, what's going on? So I'm going to take my life. Call the mom, I'm going to take my life. And the mom calls the police and we all arrive. What's going on? No, no, no. Everything's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Everything's fine. The moment we all turn our back like this, she dashed through the window and jumped. Right there. That left a trauma for everyone who was around that. What will make a human being? No, don't think too far. Anyone that does not have the spirit of Christ is none of his. They are on the payroll of Satan, just waiting until, except God delivers them, and they decamp. It's a matter of time. They'll be done away with. Don't you ever say, don't be on the payroll of Satan. Tell them I will not be on the payroll of Satan in the mighty name of Jesus. I will be in the payroll of God's kingdom. I want to say I'll be in the payroll of God's kingdom. You know the temptation of Jesus after all, he came to him and said, worship me and I will give you everything. And many people are today are worshiping Satan, licking his foot and feet and getting away with things. And the Lord said to, the Lord said to him, uh, look, only God must be served. Get thee behind me. Leave. And let's look at Ephesians 2 verse 10 before we pray for we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works which God had before ordained that we should walk in them. I will not be in the peer of Satan. I will be God's workmanship in Jesus' name. I want you to say, I will be God's workmanship. Now, before we pray, how do you spot satanic conspiracies? How do you spot satanic conspiracies? By the spirit power. Can everybody say by the spirit power? Spotting satanic conspiracies through the spirit power. Genesis chapter 37, we look at verse 18. Genesis 37 verse 18. The Bible tells us here, when they saw him afar off, even before he came near unto them, they conspired against him to slay him. Verse 31. And they took Joseph's coat and killed a kid of the goats and dipped the coat in the blood. We see here, Acts 7 verse 9. And the patriarchs moved with envy, sold Joseph into Egypt, but God was with him. These people spotted Joseph, but Joseph could not tell what was going to become before him before that time it was just an innocent little boy telling away his story away his dream thinking his brain loved him so much thinking that they're all the same blood no do not think that cheaply the devil will subvert can use anything anything can anybody say anything he can use anyone he can use anything he could even use a minister look at hannah about to break into her fruitfulness and minister just came. <gasps> this woman, you look like a, did you, looks like you took some kai kai. Look like you, you're drunk. What's going on here? You're drunk. Said, no. The woman could have fled up and given it back like many churchgoers today would do. They would literally have slapped the minister before they realized there's a minister that's talking. Some people would have slapped the minister. And some would even sue. The minister but she was just on the verge of breaking into her destiny for a miracle child she overcame you two overcome in jesus name Turn to your and say you two overcome in jesus name in the name of jesus christ they could joseph couldn't spot what was coming on because he was still young in faith he didn't really have the spirit of god to that extent he was just innocent at this point but god was with him and he began to grow in the faith. He began to grow in spiritual things. He began to, as he was resisting the devil, that God was using him more, coming upon him more. And later on, you get to see that Joseph became mighty. He started interpreting dreams. He got to another level. Even before the Holy Spirit's baptism came, he became unusually wise. And we find wherever God is, when God is in a man or a woman, you will not be ordinary. Your trajectory will be up, will be upgrowing, upgrowing in Jesus' name. I say to be upgrowing in Jesus' name. Amen. For you to be able to spot satanic conspiracies could come in the form of false prophets. You need the spirit of God. Matthew 7 15 says, Beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. Ye shall know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes of thorns or figs of thistle? Verse 17. Even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit, 
Neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Every tree that bringeth forth good fruit is hewn down. Or every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit, I mean to say, is hewn down and cast into the fire. Wherefore, by their fruit ye shall know them. You know, if you, as a child of God, there are certain things, if they are evident, somebody is envious, somebody is jealous, somebody is always fighting, somebody is always talking, somebody is always angry, somebody is always behaving in a certain way. It's easy for you, as a child of God, to say, this is not of God. This is really not the works, part of the fruit of the Spirit. It's easy. But we're talking about you going to the next level, going deeper, deep, cause unto deep. Before you see the evidences of those fruits that are not of God, when you have the Spirit of God, now don't you know about say, when you have the Spirit of God, you see it before it happens. Ah, these are the men of God. These are the servants of God doing exceptional, wonderful things. And the apostles turn to her, you have another spirit. I mean, some people today, you can imagine 50 people running around there. You have the Spirit of God. They are jumping and all that stuff. They will be so excited. Just one person says, you have the Spirit of God. You prayed for me and everything went away. You did that, 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 that. You did that. And before they know it, it enters their head. And before they know it, I didn't know I was an MOG, man of God. Now they expect everybody to open the door for them. They expect everybody, as they are coming, saluting them. They expect everybody, giving them unusual recognition. They are going, they are lost it already. And that's why they are easy targets. When the enemy, go read the news. These days, a lot of men of God are more in the news. A lot. But there are still those, thank God for this church, thank God for general superintendent, who is very focused. Can everybody say focus? But a lot of people are in the news. All these things in the news from the church. A woman is coming out and saying, you, you came to my place the other day, you did this and that. And the man is saying, what? And the argument for the mere fact that somebody can come from somewhere and say you is already is already sinful is enough to say something is wrong that someone can even come someone said who in israel come out have i def have i defrauded come out if you're here to the whole nation of israel come out and let's see who and nobody came out samuel stood tall you will stand tall in jesus name I say you will stand tall in Jesus' name. The Bible says the word of God is quick and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and the joints and marrow. It's the discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. I pray you will have God's word. You'll be rich in God's word. Hebrews 3, 12, this is where you should focus on yourself. The Bible says, take heed, brethren, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God. When it comes, and you know when it comes, you know yourself. You're the best policeman for yourself. Your conscience is there. You know when things are going wrong. And it's your duty to weed out, take down the little foxes. Don't allow them to see the light of the day. Lastly, before we pray, what should be our response to Satan-inspired conspiracies? We see how Reuben stepped in, Judah stepped in, and they were able to deliver Joseph from death. Romans 8, 31 says, what shall we say then if God be for us, who can be against us? How do we respond? I want you to, you respond by understanding your identity if you're a child of God. Understanding who you are in Christ Jesus. The Bible said, no weapon. Can I ever say no weapon? That is formed against me, Isaiah 54 verse 17, no weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper, and every tongue that shall rise against thee in judgment thou shalt condemn. This is the heritage. The Bible says this is the inheritance. This is your blessing. This is you. This is what belongs to you. So if this is your portion. Don't lose it. This is the heritage of the servants, servants of the Lord. What does it mean to be a servant of the Lord? A servant of the Lord must be humble. A servant of the Lord must be prayerful. A servant of the Lord must be, must, must be conscious of the Lord himself. You see, a servant of the Lord, be all conscious of the Lord that you're following. He's my shepherd. But are you uh, humble enough to follow that good shepherd? You will follow that good shepherd in Jesus' name. There's no weapon that is formed against me. I want you to say that after me. No weapon. 
that is formed against me shall prosper. And every tongue that shall rise against me in judgment, I will condemn them. It is my heritage because I will be a servant of the Lord and I will have the righteousness of God. Don't go to your employer and, and you face your employer. No weapon that is formed against me shall prosper. You see, I've been in this place for, for a very, very long time. If you, it's high time that you understand who you're dealing with. You hear me? I'm, I'm not sure if you're listening. And you bang the man, you bang the door, and then you, ha, ah, you lose the job. Maybe you were supposed to be humble enough because you might possess that job by being humble. You lost the job. Don't say because they treated you this way, they denied you, deprived you of your benefit, they denied your promotion and all that, and then you go ready to fight. No. If you're not ready to stay there, before you signed up for that job, they told you they were going to pay you X, Y, Z amount. It says $50 per hour. And you agreed. And you signed it. You did not complain at that time because you really needed money. But suddenly you've gotten into that place of work and somehow a slip missed its way. The wind blew it and put it on your table. And that slip is somebody else's pay slip. And then you looked into that slip and you saw that this other person, the same qualification, maybe a little bit even more qualification than the person, is paid $200 per hour. That was the, that, in that day, the, the, the anger and the, the, the thing is coming from within. You're almost slapping your boss. You're fighting your boss. No, when you were signing up for that job, you agreed. If you no longer want that job, quit. Don't you ever say, if you no longer think you belong there, quit. Anyway, that job is somebody else's uh, family business that he has grown. Quit. If God says stay there, then stay quietly. Wait for your promotion, wait for your time. Because your time will come. You will arise, you will shine. You might be earning uh, $10 per hour now, your time is coming. I say your time is coming. Now rise up and turn to your neighbor and say your time is coming. Rise up and turn to your neighbor and say your time is coming. Tell them your time is coming. Wait a minute before we pray. We're in the prayer mode now. Whether it's five minutes, we pray. Your time has come, I know. I say your time has come, I know. I say your time has come, I know. Isaiah 59 verse 19 says, So shall they fear the name of the Lord from the west and his glory from the rising of the sun. When the enemy shall come like a flood, the spirit of the Lord shall lift up. Can I hear me say lift up? A standard. Can I hear me say standard? That's standard of righteousness, standard of belonging to Christ. Standard against him. You know, the uh, Bible puts it very, way, very well by making us to see that we are seated with Christ in the heavenlies. Ephesians 2, 6. And had raised us up together. Can I say, the Lord has raised me up. The Lord has raised me up together with Christ and made me to sit together with Christ in the heavenly places. Now, I want you to pray with uh, substance as we pray. You know, I want us to pray with certain things. You know, there, we're talking about what your response should be. And I want to just say a few things. Respond with the word courageously. Respond with what? The word of God courageously. With faith. With boldness. Understanding you serve a living God. A sovereign God that controls the universe. No one can move you if God has not moved you. Nothing can take you by surprise. In the name of Jesus Christ. Pray in season. In seasons, all seasons, be a man of prayer, be a man of humility, humble yourself. The Bible says, in the sight of the Lord, that's what you do in prayers, and He will lift you up. And it says in verse 11, Speak not evil one of another, one of another. This is where we fail, this is where we fail the test. You know, some say, hey, bro, uh, Pastor, I'm very humble, God has really humbled me. I'm a child of God, but that sister, look at her big head. When she's walking, she cannot even walk straight. The way she walks, I think something is wrong with her. 
The Bible says, speak not evil one of another, brethren. So they negated the humility with evil speaking. And so when they are praying, so I beg, you're not ready yet. Wait a minute. When you're ready, you come back to me. He said, he that speaketh evil of his brother and judgeth his brother speaketh evil of the law and judgeth the law. But if thou judge the law, thou art not a doer of the law, but a judge. Another point, exercise discretion by being watchful. Joseph was not very watchful. Uh, what was that young guy, Amaz is it who that ruled the, uh, the, ruled the nation at the age of uh, Josiah? Ruled the nation at a very 12, right? Eight. Josiah, sorry. Eight. Joseph at 17. Well, we can do better. Say, I can do better. I can do better. In Jesus' name. Be empowered by the Spirit. Daniel and the three Hebrew children were empowered by the Spirit. Number one, and they were educated. Turn to your and say, be educated as well. He said, Pastor, why did you add that one? You'll be a better advocate for the kingdom when you're knowledgeable. We all can be educated. You will be a better advocate. Tell them you will be a better advocate. A powerful advocate. Because you have the word and you have the spirit of God. Every one of us can be educated. You can learn more. You can learn more, and I can learn more in Jesus' name. Tell them, take care of yourself as well. You know, Esther was very, she took care of herself. That when the king was looking for a substitute, I love this one. She was admirable. Her personality was excellent. And they, but do you know, that was a deliverance from the plot. God planted her there. To deliver the children of Israel. Just like God planted Joseph. The enemy meant it for good. Sorry, for, for evil, I mean to say. The enemy meant it for evil. But God just turned everything around and decorated Joseph. And when they saw again, Joseph was, he was even weeping. <laughs> I've missed my father for so long. These are my brethren, my blood brother, 22, see, all my life. And he had this fear of God. They wept, he wept, they reconciled. It wasn't a fight back. God will do a new thing in your life. I said, God will do a new thing in your life in Jesus' name. Today, I want us to pray and say, God, I'm sorry for ways that I didn't do well. Just pray that prayer this morning before we pray. Say, God, I'm sorry for the ways I've not done well over time. I'm just very sorry for the ways things have not done well. Things have not done the way you want me to do them. And you're here this morning, you are not really giving to God. You're not born again. Then you're losing out from this battle. You are losing out in this battle. You want to make sure that you are back to the zone where God wants you to be. Say, Lord, I'm sorry. I'm sorry for the many ways I've not done well. I'm very sorry. Forgive me. Forgive me. Pardon me. I haven't acted well. I've not done well all the time. But Lord, I'm ready to be more consistent. I'm ready to be more, oh God, giving to your word less of me and more of you. I'm ready to say none of me and all of you. None of me and more of you. None of me and more of you. None of me and more of you. More of your spirit, more of your love, more of your compassion, more, oh God, of your grace in my life. You don't deal with people based on where they are coming from. You just say, because this person doesn't look like me, doesn't my tribe, or don't look like my race. So you, then you say, you're going to act in a certain, no, no. Say, so Lord, I am ready to be God-like. I'm ready to have God in me. For God so loved the world unconditionally. I'm ready to be a child of God. I'm ready to be real to my God. I'm ready to be real to my maker. In the name of Jesus Christ, in the name of the Lord, I'm going to walk in the spirit. I'm going to be a man of the word. I'm going to walk with discretion. I'm going to be a man of prayers, not just talkative. Talking about prayer, but not having a sense of prayer. Every canality within me, in Jesus' name, we pray. You go tell God this morning, every form of canality within you, tell God to take them out in Jesus. Just, just take them out, oh God. Say, Lord, take them out. Take away. Take away the spirit of canality. Take away sensuality. Take it out. Take it out entirely from me. Take it out, Lord. Take it out completely. And make me, oh God, who you want me to be. 
I'm ready. I'm ready to walk with you. I am your workmanship. Tell the Lord, I am your workmanship. Tell him I'm your workmanship. I am ready to work for you and not work for Satan. I'm ready to serve you, oh God, for the rest of my life. I'm asking for grace. I'm asking for strength. I'm asking for mercy. I'm asking for, oh Lord, I'm asking for the supernatural power of God to help me to walk for God, to help me to walk in the spirit, to walk for his kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray. You're going to say, God, I agree to be a stakeholder for kingdom advancement. I agree, I will walk with you as a stakeholder to move your kingdom forward. I want you to open your mouth and pray that prayer. Lord, I'm going to walk with you. I'm going to walk as a stakeholder, a committed stakeholder in kingdom advancement. Father, I pray for grace. I pray for strength. I pray for power. I pray that, Lord, you wake me up from slumber. Make me, O oh God, to be fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. Help me, O oh God, to be fervent in the spirit, serving the Lord. It's not a function of age. This man, this uh, Joseph, was a very young person. We learned from him today, 17 years old, and all this happening with him. Because God made me to be fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. I will not serve God because people are watching me, but I will serve God because I, from my heart, wholeheartedly, not partially, not partially, in the name of Jesus, but from the depth of my heart, I will give my all to him. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. We're going to pray some prayer this morning. And uh, every fetter shall be broken in Jesus' name. Every band shall be loose in Jesus' name. And maybe you say, I'm in a pit. The, power, the Lord will send his angels and get you out of that pit. Or maybe you say, I'm already imprisoned by something, enslaved. The Lord will liberate you from a prison place. In the name of Jesus, open your Bible with me. Open your Bible with me. Numbers chapter 23, verse 23. And I want us to read that together. Numbers 23, verse 23. And we'll use that to pray. Numbers 23, verse 23. Are you ready? Okay, I'll wait for you. Numbers 23, 23. We'll pray with that. And I want you to do justice this day. I want you to destroy. I want you to break every stronghold claiming the promises of God, standing on the word of God. You know, you're going to hold on to this word. You're going to say, God, I stand upon your word. Lord, I stand upon your word. I stand upon your promises. And I am ready, Lord, to break every stronghold. Every stronghold. Every stronghold. It could be a stronghold in the area of marriage. You know, you, did, you say, well, just, there's always something. There's just, you don't get what's going on. You don't seem to be on top of what's going on. And maybe nobody's even looking at your direction. Or perhaps, uh, you know, something is always scuttling that. And maybe even the people that, of course, that came may be the wrong people. But now the, even the right person coming is also, is being blocked. And there's demonic blockages. They don't see you. They see you as a different person. Or when they see you, they see a different personality. They see you as a wolf. They don't see you as a, a child of God. And the devil has put another personality upon you. Today, by the blood of Jesus. I say today by the blood of Jesus. I say today by the blood of Jesus. That bondage shall be broken. I say today by the blood of Jesus. Every ordinance of the enemy will be blotted out. Numbers 23, 23, I want you to read with me. Surely there is no enchantment against Jacob, neither is there any divination against Israel. According to this time, it shall be said of Jacob and Israel, what had God wrought? You're going to read it and personalize it now. I want you to say, surely there is no enchantment against, what's your name? I, I didn't get your name. I, <laughs> against, you forgot your name? Uh, uh, don't tell me the enemy got you to even forgot, forget your name. Now, you have more than one name. The enemy let go of one name, but you have middle names. He has captured that aspect of your life. And those names mean blessings. Those names mean different things. He got, he allowed you to go with one name, but here as I speak in the spirit, he has held on to some of your names. And now he has taken advantage deprive you of the blessings that come with that name. Today, you unlock, I say you unlock, the blessings embedded in that name. So read this with me again. Surely, there's no enchantment 
against Uche, against Charles, Udochu. Neither is there any divination against Uche or Charles Udochu. According to this time, it shall be said of me, it shall be said of my family, what had God wrought? Now begin to break. You have the authority license to break. Like Jesus rebuked the devil, say, it is written, it is written, it is written, I pray, it is written concerning me. I will be the head and not the tail. It is written concerning me, above only and not beneath. Joseph was 17. If he knew to pray in a different way, maybe. It is written concerning me. Get thee behind me, Satan. It is written concerning me. I and my children will serve the Lord. It is written concerning me. I will arise and shine. Every prince of Persia, hear the word of the Lord. Every angel of darkness, move on. It is written concerning me. When he sees the blood, he will pass over me. Every attack against my mental state, every attack against my health, every attack against my destiny, every attack against my children, it is written concerning me. The stranger shall panic. I come out of their hiding places. Every influx of the pit of hell, every influx of satanic agents, every influx of witchcraft into my family, the Lord rebuke you. Every activity of witchcraft, every power of darkness, the Lord rebuke you, Satan. Bind them, bind them, bind them, bind them. You overcome by the blood of a lamb. Play the blood of Jesus. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principality. Every resistance to my marriage, every resistance to my freedom, I rebuke you, Satan. I bind you, Satan. The Lord rebuke you. The ox is laid to the root of a tree. Whatever tree my heavenly Father has planted shall be rooted out. I root them out. I root out that godless tree, that tree that is born in envy in my family, that tree that is born in witchcraft in my family, that tree that is born in jealousy in my family, that tree that is born in death in my family. I come against untimely death. The Lord rebuke you, Satan. The Lord rebuke you, Satan. The Lord rebuke you, Satan. I bind you. I destroy you. It is written, it is written, I am covered in the blood of Jesus. My family is covered in the blood of Jesus. It is written, Satan. Every Satan inspired conspiracy. There is no enchantment against me that shall prosper. There is no divination against me that will ever be established. According, what time are you expecting? What time are you expecting your breakthrough? What time are you expecting your miracle? Are you expecting it tomorrow? Are you expecting it next month? Are you expecting it next year? According to this time, mention the time. Now, mention the time. You have the liberty. You have the power. You have the liberty. The kingdom of God suffered violence. Why will I be fruitless as a Christian? Why won't I be a fruit of the Christian? Every territorial spirit, every power of darkness, every demonic veils, every demonic wiles, every scale of the enemy over my eyes, over my family, over the church, the Lord dispel them. I thought you'd be enraged. The kingdom of God suffers violence. The violent take it by force. Herod took one of the apostles and he came for another one. They did not agree. They had to pray. They prayed. When the people of God pray, the equation changes. I want you to pray. Pray the Spirit. 
Pray with understanding. Pray launching your destiny. Some people are clothed with demonic garments. They are wearing tattered clothes spiritually. They are wearing filthiness spiritually. Joshua the high priest came before the Lord and his eyes were opened. He saw the wretchedness. He saw the garment of filthiness. He rent it out. Every garment the enemy has put over you, every pollution of your water, your, bar, your axe has fallen into the water. The axe head is not, it sank into the water. It is going to swim. There is no enchantment against me. There is no divination against me. According to this time, it shall be said of me that God has done a new thing, that God has done a miracle. All the falling and rising shall cease. Are you tired of praying? Are you tired of praying? Pray with all prayer and supplication in the spirit and watching them to, to all perseverance and supplication for all saints. The Bible says, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities. I want you to pray. Every satanic conspiracy against me, in the secret, our God destroy them. Arise, O God. Arise, O God. Arise, O God, and destroy them. Blotting out the handwriting of ordinances written against me. Nail them to the cross. It is written, I am delivered. Whosoever the Son shall set free or make free shall be free and free indeed. Plead the blood of Jesus. Is it not better you tarry a little bit longer and have your destiny turned around? Is it not better you tarry a, bit, a little bit longer so you can rest tomorrow? Is it not better you tarry a little bit longer so you can spend less time fighting demons and principality? Now I want you to pray this prayer. Every witchcraft, witchcraft, the spirit of witchcraft in this congregation now. The spirit of witchcraft. The spirit of witchcraft. I bind you. Lose your grip. Lose your grip. The spirit of witchcraft. Lose your grip. Lose your grip. Lose your grip. The spirit of witchcraft. Lose your grip. Lose your grip of our brethren. Every activity of the spirit of witchcraft, I purge you in the blood of, with the blood of Jesus. Every infiltration of the enemy into the church, the Lord rebuke you, Satan. The Lord rebuke you, Satan. It is written that Christ blotted out the handwriting of ordinances that was against me, that were contrary to me. Jesus took it out of the way, nailing it to the cross. He said, It is finished. It is finished. It is finished. Somebody's been liberated here today. I see the veils being torn around and removed. I see the garments of unrighteousness being removed. I see the impersonation of the enemy being removed. If you have to mourn in the spirit that you may receive a garment of praise, do so. Do so. You are allowed to mourn in the spirit. You are allowed to mourn in the spirit. Maybe you need to open up and cry out. Let them rush out. Let it rush out. So God is doing something. The spirit of the Lord is in the house. The spirit of the living God. The word of God is quick and powerful. The word of God is quick and powerful. Every foundation of wickedness, every foundation of witchcraft, every foundation of witchcraft within the church, I break them. I break them. 
I break them. In the name of Jesus. Having spoiled principalities and powers. Every demonic organization. Satan has organizations. He has hierarchies. He has a sense of unity. <laughs> now I want you to divide them. Now call them fire. Call them fire. 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 Holy Ghost fire. Dismantle their organizations. Dismantle their unity. Dismantle them. Dismantle them. I call them fire. 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 The Lord is a consuming fire. 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 Let your fire begin to burn. Let your fire begin to burn. Let the fire begin to burn. And if you have been, you are experiencing a vicious cycle, open your mouth, cry out, cry out, cry out, cry out, cry out. Fire, 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 fire. The fire of the Lord, the fire of the Lord. Every demonic conspiracy, the devil got you. Now tell him you didn't get me. Tell him you say I got you, but tell him you didn't get me. I release myself. I release myself. Every fetter, every stronghold, I am delivered. I am delivered. Spoil principalities and powers. He made a show of them, openly triumphing over them. Triumphing over them. I am covered in the blood of Jesus. Why must I suffer the lot of the wicked? Why must I face the penalty of the wicked? Declare it is finished. Jesus said, it is finished. It is finished. He has had enough time over your family. He has had enough time over your health. Tell him, toss for no more. The Lord rebuke you. You got some things from me. I'm getting them back. I am getting them back. I get them back. It is finished. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. So take on the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, having done all to stand. Stand therefore, having your loins get about with truth, having on the breastplate of righteousness, your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. Take the helmet of salvation, and the soul of a spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. You're going to pray that prayer again. Every activity of the work of darkness in my family, every serpentine spirit in my family, I use the word serpentine spirit because that's the devil, symbolic of the devil. He came into your family, sneaked in through that opening. Ever since he sneaked in, He's been coiling himself, decimating things in the family. You're going to say every serpentine spirit, spirit of the devil within my family. I bring an end to your activity. I flush you out. I flush you out. I flush you out. Out of my family. Out of my family. Get out. Get out. Get out. In the name of Jesus, I plead the blood of Jesus. Every stranger will panic. Let them be rattled. Let them be rattled. Let them be rattled. Let them be rattled and come out. Come out from their hiding places. No, I said family, but now inside of you. Inside of you, manifestation, 
Yeah, cry out. Out, 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 out. Out, 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 out. Forget about the name. Out, just out. Out. Out of your life. Out of your life. Out of your life. Out. Mark. I see the fire, the fire, the fire, the fire. The fire, the fire, the fire, the fire, the fire, the fire, the fire. The fire will make it hot for Satan. The fire, the fire, the fire, the fire, the fire. Holy Ghost fire. I can see. Yeah, 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 yeah. Thank you, Jesus. This is how to possess your destiny. Fire, 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 fire. To my right, fire. To the center, fire. To the left, fire. Fire, fire, fire. Yes, 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 yes. Thank you, Jesus. I see deliverance. I see salvation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fire, fire, fire. Thank you, Jesus. That is how to smoke the devil out. Don't be casual. Don't be passive. If others are praying, you to be praying. Let the demons flush out. Don't keep quiet. When demons are flushed out, they look for where to go to. Out! 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 To my right, to my left, to the center. Out! Fire! Fire! Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. For the Lord is a consuming fire. You will, cre you will cleanse your church of every power, of every foul spirit, of every witchcraft. In the name of Jesus, they are living out, out, out. They came with sicknesses, out. They came with death, out. They came with untimely death, out. They destroyed our destiny, out. They blocked your vision. They blocked your destiny. You are not visible. You will be visible after today. I say you will be visible after today. You will be visible after today. Mark today. Mark today. A turning point. Mark today. A turning point to your destiny. The Lord rebuke you, Satan. Out. Thank you, Jesus. Blotting them out. The enemy came like a flood. The Lord raised the standard. The spirit of the Lord. The standard of righteousness you raised. You came and rescued Joseph. The conspiracy that was against him. You brought him out. And the patriarchs moved with envy. I come against the spirit of envy. I come against the spirit of jealousy. I come against the spirit of the devil. Move with envy. So Joseph into Egypt. But God was with him. The Lord is with us. The Lord is with us. Mark today. Mark today. A turning point. 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 You got the power. You got the power. Why should you be falling and rising? You got the power. The spirit of the Lord is coming upon you. A new spirit, a new mind, a new attitude. In the name of Jesus, I am seated with Christ in the heavenly places. Far above principalities and powers. Upon me I bear the mark of Christ. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for your unconditional love towards us. Thank you, Jesus. For your grace that brought salvation to us. Our eyes are open. Thank you, Jesus. Pastor Piri. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, the blood of Jesus. Oh, the blood. 
of Jesus. Oh, the blood of Jesus has washed me white as snow. Oh, the blood. Oh, the blood. Oh, the blood of Jesus. Oh, the blood of Jesus has washed me whiter than the blood of Jesus has done it in Jesus' name. We're going to just close in prayer as we praise God now for what the Lord has done. The Lord has done it. The Lord has done it. It is done in Jesus' name. As the man of God has declared, we mark this day. Things will not be the same in your life. Things will not be the same in our ministry. Things will not be the same in our families. Things will not be the same again in the church. And we're going to see the blessing of God in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you and you bless your name. We appreciate you, O oh, gracious master. Thank you, Lord, for having used our pastor, oh God, to minister in a very special way this particular day. Lord, we pray that as he has decreed and declared, oh God, it will be so upon each one of us in Jesus' name. Lord, where people have been locked in time past, any area of our lives where we've been locked, oh God, from today, everything is open, the doors are wide open in Jesus' name. Oh God, there'll be no sin that will hold any one of us down. No captivity will hold any one of us down. Lord, we are praying, O oh God Almighty, holiness and righteousness will be our watchword in Jesus' name. Lord, by your grace, we are going to overcome. Any challenge, we are going to overcome. Lord, I pray victory will be a portion in Jesus' name. O oh God, I'm praying for every family represented here, O oh God. As your man servant has decreed, O oh God, peace and joy in every family in Jesus' name. Every power of darkness has been standing against any family presented here. As the man of God has decreed, O oh God, we are praying that all such spirits be cast out in Jesus' name. Let the blessing of God flow in that family. Let the peace of God flow in every family, O oh God. Lord, we have been affliction, sickness, or disease. Whatever it is, Lord, I pray, Lord, as the man, man of God has decreed, let there be total healing and deliverance in Jesus' name. Every demonic oppression of God be destroyed. Lord, I pray, let the blessing of God, O oh Father, flow in every life in Jesus' name. Lord, I'm praying in any place of work, any one of us, oh God, the blessing, the promotion has been locked by some people. Lord, as you rise up Joseph out of the prison, Lord, I pray right now, oh God, let there be a promotion for every one of us in Jesus' name. The Lord, beginning this week, oh God, the windows are open. We're going to see the blessing of God in every family. And your name will be glorified more and more in Jesus' name. Lord, we want to thank you, Lord, for all the blessings you have poured upon us. Upon us as individuals, families, and the church, Lord, the blessing will continue in Jesus' name. Lord, we pray for our pastor more and more grace upon his life. More and more anointing upon his life in Jesus' name. We thank you, we bless your name, Father, because we believe you have answered. As we go, Lord, we are going in the blessing of the Lord. Receive all the praise and adoration of God. In Jesus' name we have prayed. A big amen for Jesus. The Lord has blessed us today in Jesus' name. We're going to share the grace in fellowship, the grace one to go. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Turn to the person next to you, surely, surely, goodness and mercy shall follow you all the days of your life. Particularly this week, the blessing is going to follow you. And you will dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Thank you very much, sir, and God bless you.
without retaliation. We want to serve the Lord. And this year, as we serve the Lord, we'll serve the Lord acceptably in Jesus' name. Did I lose my amen there? I'm reading from Luke chapter 1. Luke chapter 1. I'm reading from verse 17. A God is a covenant keeping God. And all the promises he has made unto us, as we serve the Lord this year, he will fulfill his promises in our lives in Jesus' name. Luke chapter 1. I'm reading from verse 17. In verse 17. As I speak, by the mouth of his holy prophets, we shall be since the world began, that we shall be saved from our enemies. This is the year. I said, this is your year. All those things that retarded your progress, beat your back, drove you back. There's a lion in the way. That lion is gone. Enemies are waiting in the way, and I cannot go on. This year, you will go on. You must climb up. You must succeed. And all those enemies of the way, the Lord will clear them in Jesus' name. To perform the promised, uh, the mercy promised to our fathers, to remember his holy covenant, the oath, which is swear to our father Abraham that he will grant unto us, unto me, unto me, that he will grant unto us that we, being delivered out of the hands of our enemies, begin to rejoice, begin to prepare for a greater year. And for a higher year and to, for a prosperous year and for a spiritual life this year in jesus name anything and everything that should have held you back and you say i cannot climb all those things are taken up this year in jesus name that he will grant unto us that we being delivered out of the hand of our enemies might serve him. How? How? I said how? Without fear. You know, if you are going to the exam hall and you are having fear, that fear will knock off your brain. You'll forget everything you wanted to write down. But you'll go to your exam hall this year without fear. If you're starting a project and you have all the wherewithal, everything you ought to have to finish that project, if fear comes in, you'll be trembling. Your knees will be shaking together. The hypertension you didn't have before will knock at the door and the door is open. Hypertension will enter in. Once fear enters, sickness and all those things will enter. This year, the door of your life is closed against fear. You will walk without fear. You go for your interview without fear. You speak without fear. You evangelize without fear. That we might serve him without fear. Look at verse 75. In holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our life. Last year, the previous years, if holiness was a tough doctrine, holiness was difficult. This year, holiness made easy. It will be like you are drinking water, holiness. It will be like you are eating what's your best food, okay, jollof rice. It will be like you are eating jollof rice, holiness will be easy this year in Jesus' name. For me, I said for me, I see the excitement in your life this year is going to be better. I'm talking to you today on our new life and renewed service. 
before the covenant keeping God. Our new life and renewed service before the covenant keeping God. Three things we're looking at. Number one, the promise. Number two, the privilege. Number three, the passion. The passion. This year you'll not be sluggish. You'll not be lukewarm. You'll not be dull. You'll not just be dragging your feet. There's going to be passion coming out of your life in Jesus' name. Number one, the promise of deliverance from all our foes, all our enemies. The promise of deliverance from all our foes. Number two, our privilege of sacrificial service without fear. Our privilege of sacrificial service without fear. Number three, our passion for holiness before the heavenly father our passion for holiness before the heavenly father number one the promise of deliverance from all our foes from all our enemies come back to luke chapter 1 verse 74 luke chapter 1 verse 74 that he will grant unto us the grant is given this year that we've been delivered out of the hand of our enemies delivered out of the hand of our enemies he made that promise many years ago and now you have come into the kingdom and that promise is to be fulfilled for you in his fullness Every iota of fear, every grain of fear, every atom of fear, every little fear, every big fear, he will deliver you from that in Jesus' name. All those enemies will know they don't have any power over your life. They tied a rope around your waist. You want to move on, they drag you back. That rope is shattered. Exodus chapter 23. Exodus chapter 23. I'm reading from verse 22. But if thou shalt indeed obey my voice, Lord, I will obey. Lord, I will obey. If thou shalt indeed obey his voice and will do all that I speak, then I will be an enemy unto thine enemies. That's your amen. amen. I will be the almighty God said it will be an enemy to all your enemies. And an adversary to thine adversaries. Look at verse 23. Mine angel shall go before thee. As you are traveling from one place to the other, the angel of the Lord will go before you. As some people are waiting on the road, they were not waiting for you, they're waiting for other people. But uh, sometimes the people that run into uh, those people who are not, uh, that you are not, they are not waiting for you. But this time, uh, this year, from today, somebody help me shout today. From today, the angel of the Lord will go before you and will clear the road before you. And look at that verse 23 it says and bring you unto the amorites promised land to the hittites promised land to the Perizzites, promised land to the canaanites promised land to the hittites promised land to the jebusites and i will cut them off isn't this year good isn't this year going to be great it says i will cut them off cut them off cut them off thou shalt not bound down to their gods nor serve them nor do after their works but thou shalt surely overthrow them you will overthrow all the images and the idols of the occultic worshippers in jesus name 
and quite break down their images. This year, verse 25, ye shall serve the Lord your God. Ye shall serve the Lord your God. Uh, you, you know, sometimes we don't understand how God works, but this year you will not miss your blessing. I was, you know, one of the few days I was, um, you know, walking along uh, the road. You know, people don't see me nowadays walking along like that, but, you know, that time, not too long ago, I was walking along the road and I met somebody. And as he was coming, he was uh, smiling. And I was wondering, who is this person? And then when we met, he said, hey, good afternoon. So I said, good afternoon. How are you and who are you? He said, you may not know me. I was at the Bible study on Monday. I had a burden. I had an oppression. I had this terrible sickness. And that day you didn't even pray for us at the end of the Bible study. As we were teaching the Bible study like this, all my problems vanished away. You will serve the Lord your God, and he will bless your bread. Amen. And bless your water. Amen. And I will take sickness away from the midst of thee. The fibroid in your wife is gone. The tumor in your body is gone. And the sickness that is going to take millions of naira from you, you will enjoy the spending of your money. That sickness, go in Jesus' name. <laughs> serve the Lord, serve the Lord. And he says, as you serve the Lord, like that person that told me that it was just at the Bible study, as the word was coming forth, come to the Bible study this year. I said, come this year. Habit may hold your back. And your mind may hold your back. And because you've not been coming, you are not used to it, start something new this year. What you have not been doing before. And the Lord will start something new also in your life in Jesus' name. Verse 26, there shall nothing cast their young nor be barren in thy land the number of thy days I will fulfill the number of your days he will fulfill in Jesus name the promise of deliverance from all our foes look at Psalm 34 Psalm 34 I'm reading from verse 7 Psalm 34 we're reading in from verse 7. In verse 7, the angel of the Lord encampeth round about them that fear him and delivereth them. And delivereth them. No matter how many the enemies are, how many they are, the angel of the Lord encampeth round them that fear the Lord and delivereth them. O taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusteth in him. O fear the Lord, ye his saints, for there is no want, there is no lack, there's no scarcity, and there's no poverty, and there is no famine to them that fear him. You'll have plenty this year. Abundance this year surplus this year the young lions do lack and suffer hunger but they that seek the Lord shall not want shall not lack any good thing student what are you looking for even if other people don't get this year you'll get it in Jesus name if you have already taken the exam and you have already done everything you ought to do, you go back home and relax, they will call your name. They will call your number. Do you believe? 
it is done in Jesus' name. Come, ye children, hearken unto me. I will teach you the fear of the Lord. What man is he that desireth life and loveth many days that he may see good? You will see good. Keep thy tongue from evil and thy leaves from speaking girl. Depart from evil, do good, seek peace, and pursue it. The eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous. Any righteous person here today? The eyes of the Lord are upon you. His ears are open to their cry. The face of the Lord is against them that will do evil. Anybody that will try to do evil against you, the face of the Lord will be against them. To cut off the remembrance of them from the earth. The righteous cry, and the Lord heareth, and delivereth, and delivereth, and delivereth them out of, out of, out of troubles gone, oppression gone, dangers gone. Disaster gone, Amen. destruction gone, Amen. those bad dreams, they are nullified. Amen. The Lord is nice unto them that of a broken heart, and save such as be of a contrite spirit. Verse 19, many are the afflictions of the righteous, but, tell me now, but say it aloud but the lord delivers him out of some of them out of them all i welcome you to this year of blessing some eight one some eight one i'm reading from verse 13 some eight one or even from verse 13, oh, that my people had hearkened unto me. Oh, that my people had listened to me. Oh, that my people had obeyed my word. And Israel had walked in my ways. I shall soon have subdued their enemies. I shall soon have subdued their enemies and turned my hand against their adversaries. Obedience to the Lord brings us victory, brings us dominion over all enemies and adversaries. The haters of the Lord should have submitted themselves unto him, but their time should have endured forever. He should have fed them also with the finest of the wheat and with honey out of the rock. What are you expecting out of the dry rock? Honey out of the rock shall I have satisfied thee. Satisfaction in your life. Fulfillment of the promise of God in your life. Deliverance from all your enemies in your life in Jesus' name. Now you can live your life without the fear of an enemy because they are all defeated. I said they are all defeated. Jeremiah chapter 15. Jeremiah chapter 15. We're reading from verse 20. Jeremiah chapter 15 verse 20. And I will make thee unto this people a first brazen wall. And they shall fight against thee, but they shall not prevail against thee. For I am with thee to save thee, and to, and to deliver thee, says the Lord. I will deliver thee out of the hand of the wicked. And I will redeem thee out of the hand of the terrible. You know, there's somebody in that community, he's so bad, they don't call him by his name. They call him Mr. Terrible. 
Mr. Wickedness, Madam Wickedness, Madam Terrible. And people don't, they don't go near them. And any sin that, if they have any sin, and the man comes and says, hey, go out there, that land is mine. They run away from their land. Mr. Terrible takes the land this year. I said this year, your property, no Mr. Terrible will be strong enough to take it away from you. As you are coming like this, remember, remember, remember that this year, anywhere you are going, a mighty angel is going before you. The mighty power of the Lord is going before you. And before you get there, that angel will clear Mr. Terrible, Madam Terrible will clear them out of the way for you in Jesus' name. And I will deliver thee out of the hand of the wicked. And I will redeem thee out of the hand of the terrible. Second Peter, Second Peter, chapter 2. In Second Peter, chapter 2, reading from verse 9. The Lord knoweth how to deliver the godly out of temptations. Amen. And to reserve the unjust unto the day of judgment to be punished. Now I'm going to show you threefold deliverance. Somebody say threefold deliverance. What are you going to have? I said, what are you going to have? If you say it for yourself, the Lord will do it. Threefold deliverance that the Lord is going to accomplish in your life. And look at Second Corinthians chapter 1. Second Corinthians chapter 1. I'm reading from verse 10. Second Corinthians chapter 1. Reading from verse 10. Who delivered us? That's past tense. Past tense. Anything from the past that will spoil this year, God will deliver you from them. <laughs> verse 10. Who delivered us from so great a death? The death that should have happened last year. And that death of last year, that problem of last year, saying, I am looking for my victim. Are you a victim then? I am looking for my victim. And it's coming from the past. All the dangers of the past, still running around, looking for somebody in the new year. You are delivered in Jesus' name. Look at the next part. And does deliver. Present tense. And does deliver. Every day you wake up and does deliver. Every week you spend this new year and does deliver. Past, total deliverance. Present, total deliverance. Look at the latter part here. It says, in whom we trust that you will yet I can't hear our people. He will yet deliver us the future guaranteed. <laughs> deliverance, threefold deliverance has come for you, and you will enjoy it in Jesus' name. Second Timothy chapter 4. Second Timothy chapter 4. I'm reading from verse 17. And verse 18. Second Timothy chapter 4, verse 17. Notwithstanding, the Lord stood with me. He will stand with you. Whether the members of the church are there or not, he will stand with you. Whether we are there or not, he will stand with you. And strengthen me that by me the preaching might be fully known. That all the Gentiles might hear. Look at this, look at this. And I, and I was delivered out of the mouth of the lion. Even if the lion has caught you, even if, and he's opened his mouth and you have entered in. Today, 
the Lord will pull you out. He, I was delivered out of the mouth of the lion. And now look at the assurance I have for the new year. Verse 18. And the Lord shall deliver me from every evil work. And he will preserve me unto his heavenly kingdom. To him my